In this video, I'm going to show you how I have adapted my former career as a tattoo artist into my current career as a leathersmith. This will be a two-part series, starting with how I prep my piece and then the carving and tooling process. Next video, I will teach you how I paint in the form of American traditional tattoo style. So please press subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the notification bell so you'll know when the next video comes out. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is tape the flesh side of your project. This will help prevent stretching when tooling your leather. When I case my leather, AKA wet it down, my goal is to saturate it one third of the thickness of the leather. And that will be the same for every step of this whole project. I make sure that my granite is nice and dry before laying out my saran wrap. The goal in doing this is to make a barrier between the wet leather and the dry tracing paper. When we tape up the saran wrap, we want to tape it up as tight as possible. We are trying to avoid wrinkles between the wrap and the paper. What has worked best for me is taping down a little bit of the wrap and pulling it tight to the center of my project. To help match up your drawing with your work area, I like to draw some guidelines on both the paper and the project. We want the tape as close to the drawing as possible without overlapping our drawing. This helps keeping your drawing secure as you trace over it. So I'm going to address the elephant in the room. There isn't a question I get asked more than, what swivel knife do I use? Well, it's not a swivel knife at all. To be honest, I never figured out how to use a swivel knife. So after lots of frustration and hand cramping, I removed my swivel knife blade and put it into an old tattoo tube that I had lying around. When we are carving these lines, just take one at a time. Try not to view the whole drawing, but just view the area that you're working on, or better yet, just the line that you're working on. This may seem silly or obvious, but I believe it helps the whole process.
Okay, so for this technique of tooling, you're only gonna need three things. A mallet or a maul, a smooth beveler, and a checkered beveler. That's it, that's all. What I'm doing is tapping quickly and moving my hands slowly. What we hope to do is to get into a rhythm or a tempo. We do this to try to avoid lumps in tooling our lines. My goal is to move the beveler one eighth its length with each tap. Fun fact, the origins of the word tattoo comes from the Polynesian language. The word tatau originates from the tapping sound of the tools being used while tattooing. Unlike your smooth beveler, with your checkered beveler, you're going to pick it up each tap. With your checkered beveler, you're going to pick it up and move it about one eighth the length of the head of your checkered beveler. What we're gonna do with the checkered beveler is create textured shading. When we look at our art reference, and we should all use art reference, especially if you're beginning, you're going to be looking and focusing on all of the black shading. You're gonna use your checkered beveler in those areas only. This is ultimately what's going to create your textured shading. When you don't want your shading whipped out so far, just tap softer. If you're looking for more depth in your textured shading, just tap harder. With this tool and this technique, you can get a variety of different outcomes with your checkered beveler. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Like this and share it maybe with one of your friends. Also stay tuned because the next video will come out shortly and that's when we're gonna go over the techniques of painting. All right guys, we'll check you out later.